How many of you are using WPCLI every day or every second? Lovely. How many of you have fully working WPCLI on Windows machine? Oh my God, you are a God. So if you have working WPCLI on Windows machine successfully, please write a blog post, write a tutorial. It's a, it's a hustle. And WPCLI doesn't officially support Windows because it's a hustle. So uh, do that, please, and help other brave souls. So WPCLI is a command line interface for WordPress. It's the most powerful tool you can use to do stuff to WordPress. And um, if you compare it like what you can do with uh, WPCLI and what you can do with WordPress dashboard, uh, it's more powerful than that. Let, let's just say I have a, a whole sequence on that, uh, what you can do with WPCLI, what is better, what is faster. But let's just imagine one thing. You can delete one post in dashboard. You can delete one post with one command uh, in WPCLI, and it's the same. It takes two seconds. Try deleting 10,000 posts in dashboard. It takes seven and a half days. With WPCLI, it takes you laughing for three minutes, not more than that. So uh, it's faster combined with uh, other CLI tools. It's very, very powerful when you have access to WPCLI and SSH access to server, you are the most powerful person uh, on that server. <clears throat> so you can start if you are not using it and you want to start using it. You can start slowly. You can start just doing a, a few uh, commands and then you can probably think, oh, I should do this. Can I do this with WPCLI? So there are levels like, uh, Gilfoy level, Pied Piper level, and then you became Neo. And uh, when you become Neo, what you can do is with the WPCLI, uh, you can do things that you cannot do in dashboard. You can, for example, scaffold things uh, with WPCLI. You can scaffold plugin, you can scaffold uh, post type, there, there is no plugin for that. And you don't need it because you have WPCLI. Uh, when you want to move Further, you can, so you become Mr. Robot level, you can create custom WPCLI commands in WPCLI. And some very smart hosting companies and plugin authors have been doing this for years. So you log into new project, you log into hosting server, and you check, oh my God, there is SSH, and then you uh, search a little bit further, and oh wow, there's WPCLI. So now your life is all fun and jolly, but then you find they have their own custom commands to do stuff on their servers faster, and that's really the, the most powerful thing you can do on hosting. So now I convinced you, you want to start using it. Okay, I'm going to show you. Uh, I don't have any computer or server without it. I'm not going to show you how to install it, but there is a very good documentation. And all you really need is a three and a half commands. So here we have this one command, you download it and it's working. So basically it's just one command. And then you use this half of command to check if it's, work it's working. And then you don't want to type PHP WPCLI every time you want to run command. So what you do, you make it executable with this command. Sorry. And then you move it somewhere in your path so you can execute it from anywhere. Now, what you call it here, this WP, is how you will run the command. This will be the first command. You can call it whatever you want. Just keep in mind, uh, once you install it and start using it, you will be copy pasting from Stack Overflow, from documentation. So it will always have WP, so keep that in mind. Now, when you have installed it, you can do something like this. 
and you get info about your uh, machine. I have Linux, so I didn't manage to do it on Windows. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even using it. Uh, and uh, I have the, uh, I think it's the latest version, but maybe there's 2.8 soonish or already published, but I never update my system before the talk. Okay, so 2.7 and um, now I've been dealing with some questions like, oh, well, you have to memorize the command. Well, you have to memorize the, uh, uh, you have to type correctly PHP function as well. So that's not the argument of typing. And the, the documentation complete WordPress CLI documentation is in your terminal. So when you type WP help, everything is there. You can see every command that you can use. And if you scroll down, so you see there's a lot. There are global parameters. And for some commands you will find, well, for many, you will find even examples how to do it. And once you get out of there, you can type, for example, um, so the, the first command after that is none. This is the entity you want to work with. For example, it can be post, it can be uh, taxonomy, it can be whatever. You, you saw there are a lot of them. After that, the second, uh, the subcommand is a verb. So what you want to do with this entity. And a lot of entities have the same verbs. There, there is consistency here. You can have a list, add, create, remove, delete. And if this is not enough refined for you, you can use flags, which is um, just parameters or arguments, depending on what it is. And you can really refine that um, command for you. And this is already enough abstract, so let's start doing something. Oh, by the way, we will find uh, at, in every command, at every moment, you have help available and a number of other global parameters. And my personal favorite, the best parameter in the whole world is prompt. And you will see it today how it works. OK, so imagine. Um, Imagine this situation. So I want to talk today to you about uh, a little bit about security, a little bit about uh, administration, and a little bit about development. So let's talk about administration first. Um, imagine you had client long time ago. Uh, you he hasn't wrote, called nothing, and now they send you email. They cannot access login URL. They tried. WP admin, login, whatever, it keeps sending them to error page. And this is because you were smart, you changed the login URL, so, uh, you know, to increase the security of the website, and then you advise your client to change it again so that even you don't know it. And let's pretend they did. Let's pretend clients do what we tell them in security, right? And they change it, and now nobody in the world knows this login URL. Now, you have two options. You can go to a database and search, which is boring, or you can run one WPCLI command, because we live in a perfect world where you have SSH access to every server, and there is WPCLI available at every server, right? So you choose the second option. I'm totally with you. and. Uh, we can do this easily with um, uh, alias. And alias is um, what you can set for every remote or local website, WordPress website that you have been working with. Uh, now, what is this alias replacing? If I want to go into this imaginary client server, I could say SSH. Um, so I just log in there. This is my imaginary client. Sorry. And I'm there and I have a little bit of outdated, but still I have um, WPCLI there available. The problem here is I don't know this port number. 
this is my client from two years ago. I don't know if I don't know where's the file where I wrote this port number. So I don't have to memorize anything with WPCLI and alias. What alias does is WP. Now you notice here WPCLI. This is configuration for WPCLI on your computer. And that's why it doesn't have that consistency of noun and um, verb. And here I have a list of um, some aliases. All is created uh, automatically when you create one alias. And creating one alias is just one command away. So you will see a lot of things that you can do is just one command away. Uh, this is my client alias, and you see here uh, what I used for logging there, and this is my local uh, alias. So local alias only need a path. And uh, just having path and SSH here doesn't work. You need to have SSH connection through SSH keys. Through uh, with your between your uh, local computer and uh, remote server, but that's something completely uh, out of this scope. This is just connecting your website with your local, uh, actually server with your local uh, computer through SSH keys. Then you can set this and how this is working. I can say WP alias name and let's say core version. I can just type the uh, command as if I would without alias. And uh, this is my uh, imaginary client's uh, version 6.2. It's outdated, so I can update it from here uh, just real quickly. I can say core update. And look, ma, no hands. I didn't even log in there, but you should log in just to check if it's still there. And this is, by the way, the website that has been hacked <laughs> many times. <laughs> so it, it's um, something I use only for this. And now we have successfully updated, but what we are here to uh, find out is that login URL. So I'm gonna use command for executing arbitrary PHP code. I've been using it all over the servers, all over, all over the world. It's great, it's helping. Uh, so I can just say echo and WP login URL. Now this will um, not be very useful because you see it's, it doesn't have this breakdown. So I'm gonna say, just add here new line to make it useful. Okay, so the login URL is you should have asked Milana. And this is my imaginary client's website that has been hacked a lot. Uh, so this task in real life could take a lot more time if you didn't have WPCLI. You respond to client, I don't have credentials. Client respond back, I don't have either. So you start searching for it and you spend hours on it. And then client meanwhile send, oh, I found it. And then you log in and then you see something's not working because it hasn't been updated for two years. Then you open support ticket. You cannot charge, like I've been looking for pass for two hours, right? You, you cannot put that in invoice or maybe you can. I don't know. So if you start using aliases today, your config file in WPCLI is where every credential is. And you don't even have to look at it. You just have to list aliases and find which one you want. And you can create aliases for uh, groups of website. If you want to do stuff in bulk, just don't overdo it. And uh, in two years, you will really, really love yourself because everything will be there. No no files, no folders that were on some external hardwares, you know, it, it's all there in just one file. So that's a little bit about administration and how to make it efficient and fun. But now we are going to talk about security. 
and I'm going to go to a local website. It's freshly installed WordPress just this morning and uh, let's see what we have of users here. We have administrator and this is the uh, default user that is created and let me show you what they can see. So WP admin is a command that doesn't come with WP CLI out of box. You have to install it. It's just from a command way. So you can install it and it will open a dashboard. It doesn't work with remote because remote servers have different configurations and uh, it doesn't work as, as expected. But for local ones, I don't remember, I don't memorize any local URL and no one should. So this admin, what I'm gonna say right now in next few minutes is obvious you know that, I know that you know that, but bear with me please. So this admin has access to all posts, categories, tags, pages, appearance, themes, and editor, plugins, users, all the tools, team file editor, plugin file editor. In 2023, we can edit PHP files from WordPress dashboard. It is unacceptable. Uh, so that should go <laughs> away. Uh, all the settings, everything. So this admin has access to everything. And uh, when you uh, install WordPress, this hello world is uh, automatically published and this uh, default team always shows the username of the author, which is this only user that we have that has access to everything. So now all we need is password. And WordPress websites get hacked a lot. We just saw the, the talk before. Uh, it's not news. And if, we, if this was 2009, we could say, well, WordPress is a security hall on server. But it's not anymore. It's, it, today, it's pretty much secure. Uh, and we saw in previous talk that the most um, that the highest liability is human. So the solution I have for you, just remove the human, right? Now we are building websites for them. We cannot remove humans, but what we can do is we can go around them. And this is what I'm going to do. So first, let's see what verbs can I use with user command. We can add capability, add role, check password. Now here we go with consistency. Create, delete, generate, um, list, import, meta, remove capability, spam, term, update. With update, you can change password of the users. So if you have friends, you wanna have some fun with them. I'm not judging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to demote this user, not remove them, just demote them. So WP user remove role. And now the parameter is which user. You can use ID or email address or username. I happen to know it's just ID1. And now if you take a look, this role is empty. What does that mean? You see here, I have edit post and this edit site and everything. Now when I reload, it's gone. I don't have access to dashboard at all because when you don't have a row, WordPress doesn't know what to do with you. So you don't get even that access to profile that subscriber has, nothing. So I suggest just keeping this password very, very strong because you want your hackers to be amused and keep this uh, author of all the posts. They have no access to anything. But uh, when, when I was giving this talk in Portugal this year, there was um, uh, your colleague from Seravo and he said, yeah, well, what about REST API? What about REST? Mother. Okay, so what happens now? Things are closed, but... Um, 
if you go to control U, you will find the code of uh, source code of the website of the page. And you just go search JSON and you will find here, this is REST API of your website. And this is okay, I'm logged in. I'm gonna go now to the uh, to incognito and now you see that everyone who is logged out have access to my REST API. And they can see even though I hide all the other users or whatever, they can see it here. So what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to disable this REST API for uh, external users, so only logged in users can see it. And this is going to be done with a little plugin. Um, let me. If you go to learn and developers, we finally got developer documentation in the upper menu. It was a menu, it was a, a, a hidden in footer for a long time. You go to REST API and frequently asked questions. So imagine which, which question was frequently asked. How can I disable REST API? So here is the code for disabling. And what we are going to do now here, we are going to create a plugin with WPCLI. So we are going to use scaffold command and it's scaffold plugin. Now, there are a number of parameters for this uh, to create a plugin. I want to, you, you noticed already, I want to memorize anything. I don't want to type anything that I don't have to type. I don't want to remember. So you don't have to. You can use the most wonderful global parameter in the world. Prompt. And it will prompt you with every parameter. So you can just type what is unique for your own situation. So I'm going to say here, disable rest directory name. So you see these square brackets, it means that this parameter is optional. So the only uh, mandatory one was the slug. Uh, plugin name, disable REST API. Description, we don't have a time for that. This will be WordCamp Finland community. And author, plugin URI, don't skip tests. Um, continuous integration provider default is Travis, but you can set your own if you have here. Uh, activate, yes. Activate network, I don't have a network. Force, if I had the same uh, re uh, directory name in my plugins folder, it, it this will be uh, overwritten. So this will overwrite it. So uh, I don't have, this is the first one I'm writing today. Okay, so now we just use the WPCLI to create a plugin. Let's go there. Plugins and disable rest. Let me talk, uh, show you a bit what we have here. So we have been with uh, some bash scripts there that you can check and run. Uh, we have grunt file, uh, so this is default task runner for WordPress for old uh, projects. Now, since we have Gutenberg, it's Webpack, but this one is useful. You can use it, you can convert it to Webpack, you can you know, do whatever you want with it, but it's ready for the modern development. Uh, you can start writing tests. Uh, let me show you the readme file. Uh, it's not just empty text file, it's file that has everything that you need uh, when you want to host plugin on wordpress.org so you don't have to go to documentation and find copy paste and whatever you can just start working on it it's everything is there and um, we have php file and now we are going to write this plugin so i'm gonna use vim because i feel brave today and hopefully we can close it, right? So you see here, disable REST API, everything I wrote there, everything is here. So a little course on Vim. 
when you type I, it will start the insert mode, so you can actually start coding here. And I'm gonna go back here and copy this. Now you will find a lot of plugins and code snippets, how to disable this or that. Please, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't understand every line of code, don't do it. Gutenberg is based on REST API. So you can mess up with something you don't even know what you're messing up with. What you want is not disabling uh, anything REST API. You just want to stop people seeing it, that people who are not logged in. So copy this and let's paste it here. Now, when you want to get out of here, out of editing mode, you type escape. And after that, you have colon. And if you change the file, you have W. And if you want to quit, you have Q. And it's done. We left Vim. Thank you. <laughs> so let's go back here. No, here. And oh, now we cannot get in. But let's check what we have done. Uh, this is incognito, let's reload, and you cannot see anything, okay? This is what we wanted. If we reload it here when we are logged in, it's still here, so this is good. And now we need someone who can actually log in and do stuff to this uh, WordPress. So I'm going to create a user. Again... Um, WP user, create, and now we have, again, parameters. I don't know. I know I practiced for this talk, but I don't want to know. User login. Let's say author. So this is username, but I, I'm going to say it's author. It's easier. User email. Author at local. It doesn't really matter because it's local. Row. Default is subscriber, I want author, so I'm going to type author. Password should be very strong, but I have to log in with this user in a minute, so bear with me. Pretend this is a very strong password. And after that, it's like on Windows. Next, 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 right? And here we have a user. Let me user list. You see, we have author. Now I can log out from here and log in with author. And you see this author have uh, access to posts, but no taxonomies, uh, no profile, no pages, no plugin, no theme. They don't know anything. And this is pretty secure, right? We should leave it at that. <laughs> we can't leave it at that. You know, this uh, author cannot even edit existing posts. So we have to give them a little bit more. But the next role is editor. And editor has too much space there. I don't like it. Editor, I think, can uh, install plugin. And I don't really like that. So. What we can do, we can give this author a little bit of access and permissions here and there by using capabilities. And now we are going to give them WP user add capability. Now again, parameter which user, it's ID number two. And capability, well, what I want to give them is manage categories. And this will give them access to categories and tags, because I believe if someone write posts, they have to be able to create category. Then I will give them ability to switch teams and do the same thing with plugins. It's activate plugins. Now, when something is wrong, with your site, first advice you will get from support and everyone else is just switch to default team and turn off all the plugins and then start turning on one by one and you will find where the problem is. 
Uh, so I think that's fair for everyone to have access to switch between existing themes and to turn off and on uh, existing plugins, but no new plugin will be installed before you consult your developer, because breaking sites is our job, not yours. We will break it, we will fix it. You can only switch what, what is there. You didn't see a shiny new plugin for sharing on social networks and you just install it and it's $120 there, but you found it for free. No, that's not good. So this is enough. And so, uh, a lot of teams, some plugins and even core hide some uh, settings behind edit team options and this will give this user this editor to site editor and some other uh, uh, settings by uh, different themes and plugins and there are more so you can find them in documentation roles and capabilities. You can find them wordpress.org, documentation, article, roles and capabilities. You will find all the capabilities. Now, you know, you notice that capability is what gives you access. Role is just a group of capabilities that is just the name of the role. It doesn't do anything. If you create new role, it doesn't do anything. So capabilities are those things that give you access and let you do stuff. So go wild, make it, you know, unique for uh, this uh, client you have or whoever you are making it, give them enough access to own the website, but not enough to break it. Keep that for yourself. Okay. And we've been talking about WordPress for 35 minutes and didn't break anything. I think we have to change that. So I'm going to... Um, Let's see what we have here. Let's WP plugin activate hello and let's open it in nano because once we close the Vim, let's not push our luck, right? Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of developer's nightmare. Let's find this and just do this, right? And let's go here. Oh, it's broken. And this is not helpful at all. Like, yeah, I, I see it's critical error. Thank you. But if this was production, you wouldn't want to show errors, right? But here is the workflow. There is an error or production on production. You download it because your it works on your machine, right? So you download it, you try to replicate it, you find it, you push it to uh, some testing environment, you test that it's working there, then you send to client, then client confirms, and after a week of that website, you finally fixed it, right? Well, with WPCLI, you don't have to do that. Let me show you here. I'm going to go to the root just no, for no good reason, just for you to not think that it's important to be in, in some uh, folder. So I'm in a root. I'm going to run any command, any. I just need the whole WordPress to load. So how the WordPress load? It's core, but then uh, uh, must use plugins and then plugins and then child team and team. Right, so that's the order of loading. I want the whole WordPress to load to make sure I catch that error. So I'm just going to say WP team list, whatever. It's, you know, and here we are. Here is the useless error that we see, but here is the PHP error that will actually help us. And we see it's a file, hello, PHP online 46. So let's go to, mm, right, um, content, I'm going to sing now, 
right. And it was 46, right? 46. Right, so this is unexpected and here we fix the plugin and there. Now, in real life, you probably won't be able to fix it this fast because the problem will be a little bit more than that. But in real life, you see where the problem is. You disable this plugin. It's working, not really, it doesn't have all the functionality, but it's working. It's not a dead website and you know exactly what you have to fix. So you can just download that plugin or just that file, fix it and put it back. Test it again if you have to. Okay, test it. And then you put it back and it's working. And it's far less time and your website is uh, alive uh, uh, with limited functionality, but it, it is alive. And am I done with time? Oh, I had some magic for, okay. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, so, um, I'm going to go to my magic folder, there's nothing here, and here's the magic. Database name is magic. Next, next, next. Site title. You guessed it, it's magic. Almost there. It's cooking. It's coming. Hold on. Do we want to release the Kraken? I think yes. Hello, Kraken. And here it is. It's not magic. It's a just bash script for installing uh, WordPress. And let me just show you um, how it looks like. Mm. It's not WAP. <laughs> so it has only five WPC-like commands. Uh, you download it, uh, you download core, then you, because I don't want to type anything anymore, uh, so database and uh, credentials, and I'm hiding my credentials because I don't want my root password to be in bash history. I don't want it saved in any files. So this is what you do, just a little bit of bash scripting. Then do the same thing uh, with core install. Then what I'm doing here is uh, making a permalinks, uh, uh, changing structure for, for permalinks because if you saw it here, hold on. Here, on the first website, we have this index.php and on the second website, we don't have it because I changed the permalinks. And you can do that with rewrite structure and a little bit of configuration like Apache module needs to be, uh, mod rewrite needs to be enabled. After that, there is a locomotive that's just Linux stuff and uh, shiny letters. And then if I want to re, uh, release the Kraken, I have Xcow saying, hey, have a nice day, and I open admin. So it's uh, pretty simple. You can expand it. You can add if you are using a different language or some specific set of uh, plugins that you're using all the time or specific theme. You can set it all here. You can generate uh, dummy content, put it all here. Just let it run and laugh out loud because you are never doing it manually again. And my name is Milana Tsap. I am WordPress engineer at XWP and the loudest WordPress documentation team member. Uh, if you want to talk about WPCLI or WordPress or documentation or classical music, I'm a classical musician too, uh, you can talk to me. It's been fun. Thank you so much.